Hey, it's Andrew Huang, and I'm here with Pusher in the studio today, and we're gonna be exploring this weird guitar. This is the Verso Orbit. Um, as soon as I saw this posted somewhere on a forum, I was like, I need this guitar. There's so many interesting things about it. This particular model is a baritone guitar, so instead of being tuned to E, it's a fourth down. But I've tuned it all up a semitone because I prefer being in C rather Obviously. than B, yeah, right? Of course. Yeah, because I'm super basic. Just, just lower. It's kind of got, yeah. It's rich, I like it. And it's not in B, <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> the guitar body is a folded sheet of metal. It's just a single nicely crafted sheet of metal, uh, powder coated. It is, it is nicely folded. Yeah. Um, there's even this like extra little bit here folded down with the two knobs on it um, for volume and tone. So the wildest thing I think about this guitar is that the pickups are freely movable because um, yeah. pickups are magnets. Like you need to have a pickup be a magnet to do what a pickup does. You are disturbing the magnetic field when you're vibrating a string near it. So these just oh. slide around. They're stuck onto the metal. And when you don't need to worry about affixing a pickup to a wooden guitar body, um, that means you have the opportunity to do some weird stuff. Like I could- What if we do an angle? Does that do anything? Well, this, the tone will be slightly different from low to high. Uh, I guess the so, volume oh, even. Weird. But yeah, so for instance, just for anybody who doesn't know, like the placement of the pickup relative to the strings changes the tone. Like over here, it's a little more bright and twangy. And if I just slide this down here. Oh. It's like fuller. Yeah, that is a significant difference. Yeah, so you can have both of these positioned wherever you want and then blend between them with this knob. So here, there's only gonna be one of them. And then I can shift it so in the middle where there's a little bit of a detent in the knob, it's perfectly blended between both. Perfectly blended. And then if I shift it again over here, then it's just the other one. Oh, you, you hear can, that? You that can, one's like you're, So you're on that one right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can hear it. It's yeah. Significant, yeah. But then also, you know, you could take one off. You could do volume swells. Oh. Yeah. And then I guess the last thing that's interesting about this particular one is I got a mod where there's a switch that I can flip here, which changes it from blending between the two pickups to each pickup being output on either the tip or ring of a TRS cable. So I could have each pickup sent to like a split cable going to two different chains of effects or something like that. Oh. The other day I was doing a little pedal shootout because I've got different chorus effects. I was like, I don't need three different chorus effects, so I'll just do a little shootout and decide which one I want to keep, and then um, I just like them all for different reasons, but also- So you just run them all? Having them all on at once was a really cool tone. This is one chorus. Synesthesia. There's like 30 effects in there, but I was right. comparing the chorus. And then this one, CB. And then there's the Universal Audio one. But yeah, I had them all on at once. Three choruses in a row, I was like, that's actually kind of nice. <laughs> so what you're saying is you set out to choose one of these pedals and get rid of the other ones. And you just wanted one solid chorus effect and you plug them all in together and the chorus effect you want is all three of them together. That is correct. Perfect. That is the very, um, that's the exact Andrew Huang outcome that we all should have been able to predict. Cool. Let's, let's a record click. a loop of that and just like make a little jam, make a little funk jam. Okay, um, do we need another section or is this just gonna be the same chord progression with like chords and then with, with low notes? That certainly feels to me like uh, like an intro and a verse, you know? You have that kind of going underneath something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, okay, let's get the drums because we could always just 
track more guitar later. Oh, let's also show the audience the guitar stand. It's just two pieces of wood and you slide this onto the pole because it is hollow. It's such minimalist. Is that a Swedish design? Uh, I think he's from Germany. Yeah. Not far away. I just got a fresh pair of pink drumsticks for this occasion. So yeah, we'll break them in. What do you what do you feel like it wants beat wise? When we, as soon as we got into it, I expected you to kind of be doing like a tick, 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 tick. yeah. Okay. Let's listen back. <laughs> uh, you started going when you got onto the ride. It yeah. sort of started to feel like a disco kind of like yeah. thing might. I don't know why, like nothing about this, not, not nothing, but something about this beat is just like not quite what I feel like it should be. And I don't know what it is. This is why it's better to do everything in the computer. <laughs> you know what I think I want to do then? I'll try a few, we'll, we'll turn this into like a more loop based creation. I'll try a few different drum parts. I know what that means. And we'll adjust it in post. But I do, yeah, I'll get some fills and I'll get just like, there's something about that simple like four on the floor that I feel like will work sometimes. And then also the hi hatty thing is good. So yeah, let's just do one more pass. This is how songwriting works in 2023. You just do one of everything and then later you pick three. Okay, bring in those moves, Marty. I'm thinking I'm just collecting different stuff. And because like, I don't start this type of track typically with live instruments. And it is usually like a rearranging blocks type of situation. So I think we're just collecting raw material right now. Do you wanna play some keys on this? Huh. What are we doing? F minor and E flat minor? F minor and D minor. I feel like you got more funky fingers. Yeah, 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 you get that going, I'll plug the bass in. Is this bass like too low for people? Are people gonna be able to take bass this low? Are the people ready for a bass that goes this low? Do you know what you're gonna play? Vaguely. Okay. Do you I'll know what you're gonna figure something out. just needs like a talk box or something. I maybe I maybe we'll polish that up later. I think I some sense like got, uh, yeah some sense of melody would sort of give it a focus. Yeah we need like we could turn a this robot into a singing two lines. It's like pink pink something pink it's uh um play that pink guitar oh wait that's an Aerosmith song right pink <laughs> We can't legally show that. No. Pink Panther. That's not taken. Pink it. Panther. That's perfect. <laughs> Is it just a list of things that would be trademarked if we put pink before them? What, what else is there? What other pink trademark names are there? Let's do some Googling. Pink Floyd. Yes. Pink Eye. Eye. Oh my God. I think that's what it is. I think it's like, I'll that's pretty funny. pitch my voice down and be like, you could be a panther. You could be an eye. As long as you're pink. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know how to make this lyric make sense. You could be a panther. Look me in the eye. 
And then I'm like rhyming with Panther and for no, you know, you could be a dancer. Answer. Answer. What's the answer? Pink is the answer. It's like, what's, it's doing something across the sky. What It's like spread across the sky. Great gig in the sky. Yeah. The great gig in the sky. Yeah. Cause that is Floyd, right? Okay. It'll be like a, a slightly more veiled reference, but let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. You could be a Panther. Look me in the eye. Pink is the answer. Painted in the sky. Yeah, and that is just gonna be looped and vocoded and I love how much we're doing in post. <laughs> One thing I wanted to do is uh, I set aside all of my pink pedals. Cause I was like, how do I choose which pedals I'm gonna use today? Well, getting a, a splitter cable now. In theory, we'll have one pickup going to one output and one going to another. Oh, you know what, first? Yeah, forget about these for a second. I wanna do one thing where it's, uh, I'll go into a stereo pedal and then we'll hear what it's like to have the different tones left and right. Yeah, yeah, come stand here. It's, it's weird. It reminds me of a phaser. But if it's not being modulated. You could uh, stack them vertically. So one of oh. them is handling lower strings and one of them handles high strings. Like a that piano, would be like piano mic. Oh my gosh. Okay, so neck pickup will be lower down. It'll be like even off the guitar here, I think, to get the right. You could probably have them overlap too. Whoa. This is... That's pretty sick, actually. That's really weird. I didn't expect that. I, yeah, I was just like, oh, there's gonna be some on the left, some on the right, but to actually experience it is really cool. And I feel like in headphones, that might be interesting. It's only getting easier to sell this guitar. Okay, I still wanna do that diagonal thing. What, what did you have in mind? Like, this <laughs> this would go this way, and this what? would go. No, is this gonna be interesting oh. to have a delay effect? That's cool. Another effect. Ooh. Oh. I'm going to get us into pink pedal zone. So 80s, I love it. I discovered this great thing where um, if you use a pitch shift pedal that adds a fifth, you can play almost any two notes and it just makes a beautiful chord for you. Ooh. Oh. Hmm. This is actually where we need to get the stereo thing going. Just, just vibe it up, right? So these pedals are mono, but each of them has spaciness. So if I get the other cable going again, oh, is this gonna reach though? We need one going in here and one going in here. We got there we go. With the effects on, we're now gonna have delay on the highs and verb on the lows. Oh, sh Okay, so let's track this. That totally added to the vibe. I wonder if the last thing we need is just drums on this part. Sick. Okay, final thing of the day. Did you guys hear that I uh, put out a plug-in recently? Yeah. 
So this is Transit. This is a plugin I designed with Baby Audio. And initially it was about creating better song transitions, but then we discovered that it just, when you have a macro control that is doing all kinds of things on lots of different parameters at once, there's so many creative applications. So I wanted to play my guitar through it. Also, I saw a comment, I'm gonna track it down, we're gonna put it in this video. Thank you to whoever left this comment. Uh, they said they just picked up Transit, plugged their guitar in, and then hit the randomize button, and it's like a ton of fun, I imagine. So uh, let's see what we get. That's cool. Whoa. That's a good one. It sort of sounds like it's in a space because of the spread, I guess. And there's the cool bit crush like noise happening. All right, let's hit it again. Yeah, I thought to put a bit crush on a little room reverb. Damn it, it's a good product. All right, what else do we have? Let's hit it again. <laughs> Do another. Yeah, you'd never think of fading between a bit crush and a tremolo a pitch thing. Let's get one final like vibey sound and we'll add it to this, this song. Maybe the spacey part. That's fun. Changing auto pan rate is interesting. Uh, in the vibey part, you want to do this? Yeah. Sky. Could be a panther. Look me in the eye. 